Only the greatest Christmas movie ever. Some of you are ready to go. Those are fighting words. I know you're like, but what about It's a Wonderful Life? I've never even seen it, so I can't compare. <laughs> Tis the season to be merry. Some of you are like, well, Brandon, what about Christmas, a Christmas story? I tried to watch it, but I couldn't even make it through to the end. Christmas Vacation is by far the greatest Christmas movie on planet Earth. I was expecting a rain of amen in the moment, but... <laughs> Darkness conceals and light reveals. Just a little bit of light can cut through all of darkness. About 700 years ago, a prophecy was made, a promise was made that God would send a great light. This great light would be a savior, a rescuer who would come and lead us out of darkness. And as much of your trees are adorned with lights, as much of your house is scattered with Christmas lights all around, it could be that in your life right now, you're experiencing some of the darkest times you've ever walked through. A difficulty in relationships, a difficult moments and seasons in your finances. Maybe the difficulty has come for you in your health in diagnosis. Maybe the darkness in your life is around the job, the career that, that you have, or the job that you've had for years that you no longer have today. It seems like for all of us, in some way or another, at some point in our life, we all experience darkness in different ways. And yet, this Christmas, we're promised, it was prophesied, the promised rescuer and savior. But yet, in the reality of our own life, it seems like darkness is all around us. What may look good on the outside doesn't mean it's always good on the inside for us. You may be everything that the world loves and all the things that you no longer want to be all at the same time. And what makes it worse at Christmas time is we have all of these expectations of how things ought to be and we're comparing them to the way that things actually are in our life. Just three days ago, on December the 21st, it was winter solstice, officially and actually the darkest day of the entire year. In fact, every day from the fall leading up until the winter solstice, it gets darker and darker and darker. Then on the day after winter solstice, December 22nd, just two days ago, it got a little lighter. A tiny, tiny bit. Just a little bit at a time, light started to shine a little bit brighter. And yet, it comes on the heels of the darkest day of the entire year. But I want you to hear this morning. I want you to experience and know with everything that you are that a light has come, that hope has come to you wherever you're at. It doesn't matter how dark things are. It doesn't matter how hopeless things feel. Hope is possible for you today. Wherever you're at, wherever you've been, whatever's happened in your life, whatever's happened to you in life, you can experience hope today because of the great light that's come at Christmas. Darkness conceals, but light reveals. And just a little bit of light can pierce through a whole lot of darkness. Let me show you what I'm talking about uh, with a prophecy from a man named Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet from God who spoke on behalf of God to the people of God. And in Isaiah chapter 9, this promised light begins to be revealed. When Isaiah says it like this in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, Isaiah writes, The people who walked 
in darkness. Now, at this point in history, at this very real point in a very real time in history, there was chaos. Life wasn't always easy. There was war and destruction and death and famine and plague and all of these things that had created a chaotic environment and culture for the people at this point in history. This wasn't just a a spiritual setting for us to have a religious conversation. No, this actually happened in history. It was, in a word, a very dark day for the culture of that day. And yet, even then, even in the midst of this darkness, as they were walking and working through some of the darkest points in history, This is what scripture says. This is the promise from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelled in a land of deep darkness, the place that they called home, the people that they had done life with, the land that they lived in, even it was dark. And yet on them has light shone, even In the darkest moments, this light still shines, which means at Christmas, light doesn't just invade the darkness. Light conquers the darkness. And there are things that happen, things that are revealed when this light is shown. The first thing that we see when the light shows up and shines at Christmas is the light reveals who God is. This light that came at Christmas reveals who God is to us because on that very first Christmas night, Mary and Joseph put infinite, unimaginable greatness into a, major, into a manger. If you wanna know what God is like, you know what you can do? You can look at Jesus. God is completely infinite. God has no boundaries, has no limitations. He is huge. And yet, on the other side, you and I have limitations. You and I have boundaries. There are things that we cannot do. And yet, in the person of Jesus, unimaginable greatness is wrapped up in human flesh. Jesus is God made flesh. He is God incarnate. If you flip the page backwards in Isaiah 9 to Isaiah chapter 7, Scripture says that the Lord himself will give us a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. In the middle of our chaos, in the middle of our confusion, Jesus meets us in it. He's Emmanuel, not just God for us, not just God helping us out, not just God looking after us, but God with us is the story of Christmas. Which means that he's with us every moment of every day of every life on planet Earth. He is with us in the divorce lawyer's office. He's with us during finals. He's with us as we're changing diapers. Jesus is with us on the first date. He's with us during the ugly cry. He's with us in the school drop-off line. God is with us in that therapy session. He's with us at the checkout at the store. He's with us as we're doing everyday life and the dishes that come with that. He's with us on the bus. He's with us in the custody hearing. He's with us at the table. He's with us in recovery in AA. He is with us in the waiting room. He's with us during chemo. God is with us in recovery. He is with us at the funeral because God is with us at the best of times, just like he's with us at the worst of times. He is with us today and tomorrow. He's with us Christmas day and every day after. And that is the magic of Christmas. It's not the lights, it's not the presents, it's not the trees, it's not the eggnog, although that's great. And maybe that's all you've experienced of Christmas. Maybe that's all you've ever known of Christmas is that the hustle and the bustle. 
the, the parties and uh, you're thinking to yourself, is this all there is to Christmas? You may even be at the point this Christmas on Christmas Eve where you're like, I just can't take any more Christmas parties if I have to give one more white elephant gift that I get something terrible in exchange for. If I have to listen to one more Michael Buble song, I swear if Mariah Carey sings one more time, I just can't take it. (laughs) And it may be where you're at this Christmas, but I just want you to hear loud and clear. I want you to know that you know that you know. I want you to believe to the very core of the fabric of who you are that Jesus is what makes Christmas magical. Jesus is what makes Christmas so special. For us here at Mountain View, it's not about the performance. It's about the presence of Jesus. We have no interest in putting up veneers. We want to be vulnerable so that you know that Jesus shows up in your life wherever you're at. For us, it's not about any type of branding around Christmas, but it's about the story of the Bible that tells us that Jesus changes everything. It's, Christmas is not about hype. It's about hope. It's not about any gimmicks. It's about the gospel. It's all about Jesus and the light that shines on Christmas reveals who God is. And God is a with us, with you, with me, God. But the flip side of that is also true. Not only does this light reveal who God is, this light reveals who we are. Truth is, the reality is, I look great in the dark. I mean, I mean, awesome. Some of you are like, well, you look great in the light too. I I know, I know, but I look really good in the dark because the dark hides all of my imperfections. It hides all of those things that I don't want anyone to know that are true and real about me. But the reality is when the light shines, it reveals who I am. And when that light comes on, there are There are insecurities in my life, not hypothetical, not for the purpose of this illustration, but actual insecurities that I, as a pastor, carry. That when the light comes on, it reveals who I am. There are moments that I struggle. I I carry doubts more than I wish to admit. The light, yes, on one hand, reveals who God is, that he's with us, that he's for us, that he cares about us, but it also reveals who we are. Uh, But there's good news. Can I let you in on a little secret? I mean, it's actually not a secret at all because it's all throughout the Gospels. Uh, Jesus had a reputation. Jesus had nicknames, in fact, that people had given him when he was here on earth, in the flesh, being the with us God, And his nickname was, Jesus was a friend of sinners. Which means, friend, that if you've ever sinned, if you've ever made a mistake, if you've ever done something wrong, and we all have, if that's you, if that's me, and it is us, then Jesus is with you, friend. And Jesus came into the world. That's why we celebrate Christmas, it's the reason for the season Jesus came into the world to illustrate and to demonstrate in our world, in the world that we live in, with all of the pain, with all of the difficulties, with all of the tragedies, with all of the triumphs, Jesus came into the world to illustrate and demonstrate and ultimately communicate who he was, who he is, and who he loves. Do you know what he communicates at Christmas is that he loves you. Time and time again, Jesus throughout scripture comes close. He draws close. That's what love does. Love draws near. Presence is the medium of love. And so Christmas shows us that God meets us where we are at, not where we pretend to be, which means let's engineer this out. Let's play this out. Let's run the ball down the field. If, if Jesus loves us where we're at, not where we pretend to be, what that means is it's better for you and I to be an honest mess than a dishonest saint. 
what this means for us that Jesus is the friend of sinners, what this means for us that he's the light of the world is that there is already right now an invitation from God to you to be in relationship with Jesus. And relationship with Jesus means that he is with us in our heartache. Relationship with Jesus means he's with us in the valley. It means he's with us in the waiting. And believe me, I know that there are moments in life, because there are moments in my life, probably moments in your life, if you were to be honest and transparent. There are moments in our life where it doesn't feel like God is near, let alone God is with us. Just humor me for a moment. If you go to the end of the Old Testament, there's a book by a prophet named Malachi, and Malachi promised that there would be a rescuer, that there would be a savior, this light that Isaiah talked about. He promised that he was on the way. If you go to the end of your Old Testament, you and I can easily just flip through and get to Malachi chapter four. And then with the simple turn of a page, we can be at Matthew chapter one when we begin to unpack who Jesus is. But it wasn't that simple for the people in that day. In fact, there were 400 years between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. And in those 400 years, there was complete and utter silence. There was no word from God. There was no prophet from God. In those 400 years, there was not even a sound from God. Do you know what's interesting? The sound that broke the silence of over 400 years was the sound of a baby crying. Which I find interesting because it's almost as if God is saying to us after 400 years of silence, hey, I know the world that I'm coming to is broken. Hey, I know that there's pain. I know that there's trouble. I know that you're weary and that you're exhausted and I am coming to be with you. See, God's silence doesn't mean that God is absent. Often when life feels darkest, God is nearest. And Advent reminds us that it is in our waiting, that it is waiting, in fact, not predictability, not control. It's waiting that has a central place in our faith. Each and every year, we bring all sorts of expectations into the Advent Christmas season. We bring in expectations about what this season should be like, and yet each and every year, so many of us feel as though our grief, our disappointment, our struggles are so out of place in this season of peace and joy and light. And yet, the entire message of Advent is that it is our comfort and our control that's strange to the story of Jesus. What we find at the dead center of our Bibles is not, uh, not resolution, it's not certainty about everything that happens in life. What we find in Scripture is a story of waiting. Waiting is that Christian discipline, a practice that depending on how we do it, will either transform us or malform us. And Advent is here to teach us about it. Noah waited 120 years for rain. Abraham waited 24 years for God's promised son. Joseph waited 13 years in prison for a crime that he didn't commit. God's people waited 400 years in complete and total silence. And that silence was broken by the sound of a crying baby in a manger. Mary gave birth to the savior of the world in a stable. Never doubt what God can deliver you through in hidden places. Just imagine for a moment. Uh, imagine Mary and Joseph in a dirty stable, surrounded by animals and filth as they welcomed their newborn baby into the world. There was no fanfare. 
There are no cameras, no social media hashtags, no news crews or fancy accommodations. No, just an exhausted mom and dad, proud but terrified Mary and Joseph. This is not the end of the Christmas story because God sent a great light. Not in the form of religion. Hey, here are the things that you have to do in order to gain the acceptance of God. No, this great light didn't show up in the list of rules. Here's what you have to accomplish. Here's what you need to do to measure up. No, this great light came in the form of great, amazing grace. That's the message of Christmas. That God didn't send Jesus into a picture-perfect scenario. No, this great light came right into the middle of the darkness of our world, even into the darkness of our own lives, the things that we struggle with. And a light is there for us. You ever wonder why Jesus was born in a barn, maybe in a cave, maybe in like a hostile hotel type environment with a whole lot of other people? Do you ever wonder why he wasn't born into a Ritz Carlton or some bougie place? I think it's because God had a message even in the place that Jesus was born. Because he was born in a messy stable, which tells me and tells you that Jesus knows life is a mess. And he comes into our mess to meet us in our sin because he loves us as we are, not as we should be. And what we get with this light, what we get with this Messiah, this promised rescuer, is not overbearing rules. It's not deep disappointment. What have you done? No, there's none of that from this light. In fact, Isaiah captures it this way. It says, to you, to us, a child is born. A son is given. And his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. When this prophecy, when this promise was first written, it was written in ancient Hebrew. And the word peace was the Hebrew word shalom. And in the Jewish culture for centuries, they've had this blessing of shalom. And it goes like this. May you be whole in body, soul, and spirit. As a result of being in harmony with God's will and purpose for your life, may his peace be your covering. May your heart know his fullness. And by his mighty power, may you know a victory over every enemy. May he bring to pass the deepest desires of your heart. Here's the truth of Christmas. Because of Christmas, because of this great light, you and I are in the middle of this plan where peace is offered to us. But if we're being honest right now, maybe you would say this morning that I'm not at peace. It could be circumstantial. It could be health issues, family issues, financial issues. It could be that right now you're experiencing the reality of a broken world in a very real way in your life. Do you know how you experience peace even in the midst of brokenness? You wanna know how to experience hope even in the midst and in the middle of the most hopeless times? If we're gonna experience this hope of the Prince of Peace, then we have to fix our hope on him. And as we fix our hope on him, peace begins to show up in our life, which begs the question, where, what is your hope in at the moment? Every person on planet earth has placed their hope, our hope, on something. Everybody in one way or another is a person of hope. Because you have to be. You can live several days without food. You can live a few days without water. Maybe you can live a few minutes without air, but you cannot live a second without hope. The human soul thrives on hope, which again begs the question, what's your hope in? Because what you have your hope in will determine how much peace you have. So if your hope is set on money, on stuff, and to be fair, a lot of us put our hope there. 
If your hope is in money, then everything rises and falls on your bank account or your income or your expenses or the stock market. The problem is economies change. Markets rise, but markets also fall. Can I get a witness? And if your hope is set on money, then when things change financially, your hope then shifts because of the change. Maybe your hopes are set in your relationships. If only I had the relationship my heart has longed for. Or we think uh, this person will complete me. This person will shalom me. Try using that phrase on your next date. You shalom me. Let me just tell you, that'll be the first and last date you have with that person. But when we look to our relationships to complete us, they never will. And I just want to be honest with you as your pastor. I love you. Relationships will not complete you. No human being will ever complete you. My wife will never complete me. I love her. I wouldn't want to do life with anyone else. But the reality is I married a sinner and she married an even bigger sinner. Relationships will never complete you. Whether that's dating, marriage, relationships with your kids, they are not going to complete you. But this is what we do, isn't it? We put our hope in all of these places because we're looking for peace. All of us are looking for hope. And where you have your hope will determine your peace. And friends, I'm just here to tell you this morning that there is a God who loves us, a God who wrapped himself up in flesh so that he could give his life for ours, who died on a cross for you and for me. And three days later, he rose again. And because of this, because of Christmas, you can have peace. It's really simple. It's as easy as just trusting in Jesus, not trusting in yourself, not trying to earn this, but to just ask Jesus, would you lead every aspect of my life? And friends, this great light, this great savior, Jesus, changes everything about your life. Maybe you're here this morning and you're like, well, I already have peace, this is great, I'm fine, my Christmas is just dandy. And if that's you this morning, I, I want you to hear that God not only wants to bring peace to you, but God wants to bring peace through you, believer. Madeline Langell says that we draw people to Christ not by loudly discrediting what they believe but by, or by telling them how wrong they are and how right we are, but by showing them a light that's so lovely that they want with all their hearts to know the source of it. Friends, followers of Christ, God not only wants to bring peace to our life, he wants to bring peace through our life. So much that he calls us to be peacemakers, not just peacekeepers. And so this Christmas, may we push back a little bit of darkness. May we be the light that Jesus has put in us that has changed everything about us. And may we experience the peace and the hope that is only found in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we're, we're grateful for your love. We're grateful that you came at Christmas to remind us, to show us, to demonstrate what it looks like to live. And God, this Christmas, I pray that you'd bring peace to every person in this room, not by circumstances, but through your Savior, Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.